Glad I can be here. Almost didn't happen. I'm, I'm so glad that Lloyd put my photo on the website because, um, you know, I made it through, um, I think, through the border control. And um, the guys there got a little bit uh, Homeland Security on me. He's like, what are you doing here? And I'm like, I'm going to a tech conference. And he looks at me, he's like, yeah, do you have a business card? And I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm from San Francisco. We got rid of that a long time ago. So I'm like, also, how is that? any indicator, any indication of someone being a real person that you just got yourself a business card somewhere. So, <laughs> anything else, I'm like, well, you're speaking at the conference. I'm like, yes. And they're like, what's the conference? It's called Traction. And, uh, you know, I, I pulled up the website and there was my photo on it. So, um, that's the reason that I'm here. And they looked at it for like five minutes and the photo that was up there. How long are you staying? I said, I'm, I'm out on Sunday. And um, uh, so, thanks for having me. And, um, <laughs> and I'm actually, uh, I'm, I'm super excited that I'm the last one here before the break. I was just told that someone in the first row is falling asleep. I'm not sure who it is, but <laughs> I was told to make, maybe it's you, I was, yeah. told to make, I was told to make jokes, but I don't do it. Um, <laughs> it's not my style. Um, we have town halls on Friday um, at Postmates. We're now at around 220 employees. And um, this, this, feels, this feels great. So um, it, it is a little bit, it's a little bit smaller, um, but you guys, you guys are a cool audience. There has been a lot of content so far. I looked at some of the slides, it looks great, um, but I'm so lazy. Um, I'm, re I'm, re I'm, I'm very lazy, man. Um, and especially if you're, if you're busy building a startup, sometimes that's the good thing because you know, I try to concentrate on Postmates. So when Lloyd asked me, last minute to come here, and by last minute I mean on the 12th of February this year. <laughs> I thought I have all the time in the world to prepare the slides. Um, but then, you know, at some point yesterday I realized that I have to be here tomorrow, and um, I, I thought about the topic a little bit longer. So, let's, let's jump in, but, but I only have one slide. Um, this is a traction conference, so I brought our traction slide. Um, let's try this. There it is. Um, it's the last three years of my life, and it's the last three years, or roughly three years, of Postmates as a company. Um, and what that slide shows you, it shows you our weekly delivery volume. So that's not a cumulative slide. This is weeks, and then you see that we try to map um, the acceleration of the deliveries that we're doing. Um, right now we're doing around a little bit over 500,000 deliveries I have to look it up myself, a half a million deliveries every five weeks. And at an accelerating speed, um, which is quite a fascinating experience. But you see that at the bottom of that slide, there's around 116 weeks, that's over two years, that it took us to get to half a million deliveries. Now, besides bragging about Postmates as a company, the reason that I brought this slide is because I wanted to at least spend 11 minutes and 31 seconds talking about three-sided marketplaces um, or multi-sided marketplaces. Um, let me start with two questions. Um, anybody, are people familiar with Postmates? Some, some, some of you guys are. And is someone building a three or multi-sided marketplace? Anyone in the audience? Yeah, don't do it. <laughs> I would not do it. It is really, really difficult to pull off. And I, I like to share one insight um, that we learned at Postmates, which I think is an insight, or maybe it's even a little secret into building three-sided marketplaces. So Postmates works um, in a way that, in most simplest form, it's like a remote control for your city. It's an app or a website that allows you to browse the inventory of retail stores. It allows you to browse the inventory of merchants, restaurants in your city. Press a button and have items from these merchants and partners delivered within a couple of minutes. We're operating in 30 cities in the US, and Postmates actually operates the largest on-demand delivery fleet in the United States. It's 14,000 Postmates doing deliveries. We just signed an agreement with Starbucks, with Apple. Um, so,
But the fact that we just signed these agreements is actually something that's very new for us as a company. Because for almost three years, we didn't partner with anything. Now, what that means is that if you look at how Postmates as a company works, you have a courier, a Postmate, picking up an item from a merchant, delivering it to a customer. So we have three people involved in that transaction. But for over three years, the only two people that we concentrated on were the supply and the demand side. The customer, you, pressing a button and wanting an item delivered, and the courier, the supply side, the person who delivers that item. We completely ignored the merchants. And we did that on purpose because when we started the company, we set out to build something that looks a little bit like a Google for commerce. We wanted you to be able to order anything from any store and not just a few items from the 10 or 20 stores or merchants that we would be able to sign partnerships with. See, that's one way of building a company. You can go out there and you can say, hey, you know what? I want to do restaurant delivery, so I'm building a sales team, and I'm going to sign up 10 restaurants, and then I'm going to build an app, and I'm going to have 20 couriers, and if you like food from these 10 or 20 restaurants, you can press a button and get an item delivered. But that feels so limiting, right? It, it, it feels like you've got to be in the mood for any of these 10 restaurants, for any of these 10 merchants. So we decided to not do it that way. We decided to just load as many menus, very similar to how Google started indexing the web, into the Postmates app. And we're doing deliveries from 80,000 merchants in these 30 cities that we're operating in. That is a lot. There is almost 40,000 merchants with inventory. That's also a really large number. So the reason that we did this, and the reason that we were able to do this is because at, any, at no, no moment in time did we work with any of these merchants. So for three years, we, we, we had a great ride, and, and that continued. But there, there was a moment in time, and it probably is somewhere uh, shortly after our one and a half millions delivery, when we decided to no longer ignore the third party in our three-sided marketplace, and that's the merchants. The reason that we decided to do it after one and a half million deliveries is because we wanted to start engaging with that third side of the marketplace when we have velocity and a lot of negotiation power that we can bring to the table. See, a two-sided marketplace is already difficult enough. You've got to make sure that supply and demand in our case are happy, that someone is paying, another one is receiving the money. But if you start engaging with a third party, you have desires and you have specific wishes and requests from that side that you have to take into account. So if you start engaging with that side too early, you're going down that rabbit hole of having to change the product, having to build software to satisfy, in our case, the restaurants, um, giving them the ability to update menus, set up payment. So rather than doing any of this, we disguised our couriers as customers. So for three years, they walked in a store and they just looked like you and I. We gave them a debit card. We basically hacked the payment systems in the cities that we're operating in. And we just pretended that we're a normal customer. But at some point, it was difficult for us to still be under disguise. And more and more of the Postmates would start wearing t-shirts. You know, their company had been written up about. Merchants would recognize us one way or the other. And we had a huge inbound request from a lot of the local merchants. They say like, how can we work together? Here's a couple of things. So when we felt that we couldn't really do it any longer without them, we decided to launch a small merchant team, a team of six or seven people that we tasked to go after our top performing merchants. And the goal was to make these merchants a participator in the platform, a part or somebody who participates in the platform. And we wanted to do that in a way that we can monetize from the merchants. See, for almost three years as a customer, you were to pick up the entire tab and the merchant, so to say, got the free ride. But that's the price that we paid in order to scale the platform. Now, we started engaging with the merchants, but we did that after we drove them tens of millions of dollars in revenues. And that is a completely different position that you're in than if you do that from the start. So the conversations that we had, and I'm just making that up, with Merchant X is, look, 
we drove you $2 million in sales over the last eight weeks, or the last eight months. Here's a couple of things that we would like to happen going forward. We would like to get a kickback on the GMV, on the revenues that we're driving you. In return, we're going to feature you in the app. So we were able to dictate the terms. Two months ago, we had zero merchants participating on the platform. And today, we have over 1,000 merchants. And they result into 20% of all our deliveries being monetized with a merchant fee. So two months is an incredibly short time to start engaging with a side of the market that you ignored for three years. But the velocity that, that, that you see in that is that if you wait for the right moment of time to start engaging with the third or the fourth side in your marketplace, you'll be able to do that in a very efficient way. And you can do things that would have probably slowed down your company, slowed down your growth, was a relatively small team and very, very successful. So I think a lot of, a lot of the timing, a, a, lot of the, a lot of the secret ingredients when it comes to three-sided marketplaces is that you need to understand when you should engage with that third side. The tricky thing is to know which the third side is. Um, but it is usually the side that does not require an interaction with both other sides. So in Postmates case, you have the customer who engages, uh, obviously, with the couriers and who, has, who, gets, who gets the food delivered. You have the courier who bridges the merchant and who bridges the customer. But the merchant in, this case, in that case, the only interaction that a restaurant ever had was with the Postmates walking in the door. So that is a great indicator if you look at your own business model, if you look at the marketplace that you're trying to build, the participant in the marketplace that is primarily engaging with one other person in your three-sided marketplace is the party that you can neglect the longest. Now, why would you build a three-sided marketplace in the first place? We, we talked about it, two-sided is already difficult enough, but there are, some, there are some really beautiful things that happen if you can engage all three sides and if you can inject um, enough value into the system. And th the greatest one is that you will be able over time to monetize from three sides. So if we're looking at the Postmates world, clearly we can monetize from the customers because they're paying to have access to goods. That's a no-brainer. Um, the merchant over time will participate and you can monetize because you're driving that side a, a, a large sales volume. So at some point it's a no-brainer for the merchant to say, you know what? If you 3x, 5x my revenues, I'm happy to give you a share of that. Now the couriers, the Postmates, the fleet in our case, took us a little bit longer to understand, but even on that third side, you have the opportunity to monetize. So in our case, think about, we, we were able to negotiate rates on better gear and sell them to the fleet. We were able to negotiate insurance packages or benefits and offer them to the fleet. And the, the reason that we could do that is because if you have better gear, you can do more deliveries, you earn more money. If you do more deliveries, you drive more sales to the restaurant. If the restaurant receives more sales, Postmates receives a larger percentage in GMB. And then you have a really, really powerful thing, and you get the flywheel going from not only the supply and the demand side, but you have the third party engaged in it. And, and, and that is something that is very defensible, um, and that is, once it's running at full speed, also um, also very fast growing because these three parties basically accelerating each other constantly um, and going forward. So to summarize it, understand who the third side of your marketplace is, when you engage with them, it's, it's the most important thing, and how you decide to engage with them until you um, officially invite them to the marketplace. In Postmates case, we waited until we drove tens of millions of dollars. We pretended to be customers to all these merchants directly, even though we clearly delivered the food for someone else. Um, and that's what helped us having, um, or get to the point where we are. And I'm, not, I'm not saying we made it that far yet, but um, it's looking good so far. That's all I have, I have 28 seconds, but I don't think anybody needs them. Thanks for listening to me. Thank <laughs> you.